Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being the show, we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Trails of Cold Steel, Northern War, Season 1, Episode 2. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So... I love that we basically get the scene from Cold Steel 2 animated where Osborne is like, Hey, uh, this is going to be your new Governor General, uh, Rufus Alberea. And then, like, it's interesting too because I was like, Wait, was Lecter there? I didn't, I mean, I've seen the scene like four times, but I don't remember now. I'm like, was Lecter there? They definitely never showed you out Tina and Reen watching the speech either. And it just, like, just seemed just like kind of that, like, emotionlessness on like stoicness on Reen's face while his, Osborne's giving that speech you know but obviously the bit conversation is like all right so North Ambria is like what are we gonna do you have like two sides of the table you have the Jaegers on one side and you have the more government officials on the other one of the government officials is like we don't need to worry about it Crossbell situations their own fault they're the one that try to bid for independence they've kind of they bared their teeth at their masters essentially because it's like yeah you are always in this complicated situation of you are caught between the republic and the empire and you bared your teeth at them it's like well to be fair that wasn't just them that was other people's machinations not only those in country outside of the country too with Ouroboros so it's like there's a lot of many different factors but for them it's like one of the council people's like we have a good relationship because of me but then Rogan's kind of like yeah you basically bow your head to like the reason why we have such good relationships is like you you basically kowtow to so many other countries, not even just the Empire. So you bury your head deep just to kind of like bow to them and conform to them. And Ro uh, Rogan's the one that's saying like, right, we should initiate an attack. Now, what's interesting, and I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out, the justification for everything that went down in the Northern War was supposed to be the Empire's like, yo, you need to pay us back for what the Northern Jaegers did during the Civil War, the October War. But then they were like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. And then the Empire was like, all right, bet, and went after them. They never, obviously, this is going to give us more context. And like, there's, it's probably going to be one of those things of, unless you're there, you're not going to know the full details. Like, a great example would be like, the whole situation in Chapter 5 of Code Steel 1, the whole uh, situation at um, Gorelia Fortress with the uh, railway cannons, that only those involved know that went down. Like, so that's like Class 7, any of the military people that were operating out of um, out of uh, Gorelia Fortress are there. So that's probably the similar thing here. The real reason why things kind of go to what they go to might be because of Rogan, but the word never got out to the general public because I don't think dialogue-wise it ever says, like, uh, the Northern Jaegers attacked or whatever. But it's like, Rogan wants to go on the offensive. It is interesting because you're like, Calvert and the and Erebonia are the head honchos of Zumuria. Like, uh, no other countries reflect them when it comes to the imperial, the, the, uh, the army power that they have. No other country really compares. Especially considering now that the Empire, it hasn't fully happened yet, but they're starting to roll out more and more soldats, you know? Plus, they got their little ace in the hole. The literal, at this point in time, the only one out and about, the only divine knight is under the Empire's control. Like, it's not out there doing its own thing like the others are, will eventually later on the road, you know? So, it, it, it put, it's interesting, too, hearing North Ambria's perspective, too, because for them, it's like, hey, the Empire's just trying to expand themselves. And it's like, from an outside perspective, of course you would think that. Most people think that until you get to the ins and outs and learn, like, oh, the real reason why the Empire's expanding the way it does, Great Twilight, yada, 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 so on and so forth, right? So it is interesting being like, yeah. I mean, especially at this point in the story, that's all you would think. It's like, yeah, it's just the Empire expanding because the Erebonia has always been seen as the expanding, warmongering country that it is, you know? So it's just it's interesting how that goes back and forth between these two sides because the government people of North Ambria are like, you dogs, like it's deplorable that we have to rely on like Jaegers. Even though Jaegers are seen as like, hey, you'll help us. You're kind of our only hope because the government's not doing a good enough job. But then the government looks down upon Jaegers because 
you know, Jaegers are just generally speaking, most people don't have the best opinion of Jaegers regardless because they're seen as like, oh, mercenaries that are willing to do whatever it takes to make a buck. It's like, well, the Northern Jaegers are a little different because they're the money they make is supporting their country. But despite all that, time 20, all these 20 plus years later, the country's just getting poorer and poorer, like after everything with the salt pill. So. It's interesting, and especially because Rogan made that declaration last episode, we need new heroes, we need a new revolution, because all our other, like, heroes from the revolution back then are dead, and it's like, well, the only one that's around right now is, um, Glask, you know, so he's the surviving hero, but he still has so much sway because he's the leader of, every, like, of the Empire and stuff. I do love that that theater place too is made. It's I guess it's a theater born from the palace, or maybe the theater was always a part of the palace. But it's Balmung's palace. So I was like, interesting. It's like Prince Balmung. Um, but nevertheless, that conversation back and forth is so like I said that it's fascinating, and it's hard to really say like. Well, we know where Rogan stands. What Rogan's kind of like, man, screw that. Let's let's fight the empires. Like you've been stopped pile of weapons. So immediately, I'm like. Well, we know that the Northern Jaegers had archaisms. I'm like, are you siding with Ouroboros to get all those archaisms? Because I'm like, we know you. They would say that the government officials like, oh, we know you're stockpiling weapons. It's like, would that even be enough against? Because uh, they even had the conversations like, Calvert should have been able to like keep the empire on its own. Yes, the empire has like a great army and stuff, but it just went through a civil war and it's like, you're telling me they were able to bounce back? It's like, well, they had an ace in the hole. They had like, the Calvert wasn't ready for Valimar. It's like, that, like even a regular soldat, they'd have a better chance of dealing with, but still like a divine knight on a completely different level than a, than a, a, a mass produced soldat. Their, their battle capabilities are vastly different so which obviously becomes an important conversation of like so the empire's hero like that's that that's their ace in the hole like how do you even contend with that what if like uh the empire's hero decides to just attack halias it's like there's nothing we could do about it it's like well first and foremost reen would never do that but to be fair he's a dog of the government now they give him an order he has no choice but to follow it so if they ask him to he would he'd probably put up much of a fight like if it's little i mean and they even showcase if you notice what Reen did, he never took any direct blows to any of the Calvert's uh, military. He he basically used attacks to kind of knock them out because none of the ships were like destroyed. They're just damaged enough for him to use like shockwaves to kind of knock them off course. And just any like shots he's like taking because he's not trying to kill anybody. That was something that most people who are in the know know that that's Reen's approach to how he dealt with Calvert. He didn't go out killing people. He just did enough to push them back and kind of scare them off. Because the Calvert's like, we, what the hell is that? Because they weren't. They knew there was a. Um, they knew there was a civil war going on. They had no idea about the Divine Knights and stuff because all that was in house. That was all happening in them. They probably heard rumblings and stuff like that. But even like Lloyd was like, wait, is that a is that a soul dot? what they call Solda, it's like when he first saw Valimar, because no one, because everyone just assumes like, oh, that's a Solda. They may have heard of him, but not the Divine Knights, you know, so. But like, getting back to the point I was also making, like, I don't know who's on whose side, because Rogan's doing his own thing, the government officials are kind of on their side, uh, Glask is kind of doing his thing. I don't know if he's behind Jaina doing what she's doing, because she's getting help from Ouroboros, which immediately made me go like, are you eventually going to become a, a member of Ouroboros? It's like, well, currently where things stand, we know, well, cause we don't know the faces of which Anguises, the first, the fourth and fifth Anguises, we don't know who they are. Well, we do know who the, was it the fourth Anguis? It's because it's someone from Sharon's, um, organization before they got wiped out by Ouroboros. Um, so, or she could end up being an enforcer or something like that. Or maybe she's just someone that's like, hey, I'm working... I mean, there's plenty of people who work alongside Ouroboros who don't end up joining it eventually. So that's what I'm curious about Jaina. But the moment she's talking to uh, Campanella, I figured as much because I had no idea he was in the show until like the intro of last episode. I was like, oh, I had no idea he was in this. And once that Jaeger who lost control of the vehicle was like surrounded by a wind art, I was like, 
Campanella and was like, of course, like, of course, it'd be the fool who who's doing this. And but yeah, like Ouroboros had to supply them with the archaism. So and we we see a classic archaism that you see time and time again in the Cold Steel game. So it's just it's wild once again, just to see it all animated. Um, I do love that he shows up with the balloons and everything. I mean, it kind of leans into Campanella a little bit, but that's why I'm curious, like. Does Jaina think like, oh, we have Ouroboros' backings and she okay, she's okay with that? Like, does she is she the only one who knows about that except for the guy behind her? Or does Glask know as well? And does he support this? Is that why he's telling Rogan? It's like, no, we're just going to sit back and wait and see. But they set everything in motion to make it so that Lavi and the others would get in trouble so they'd have no choice. I'd assume it's because, well, Glass probably knows who Lavi is. Rogan definitely does. So I'm assuming Glass knows exactly that she's um, Vlad's granddaughter. And so was it their choice to send people into the Empire to gather information? I wonder, is that, is that, is that something that... Uh, Glask was okay with and ordered or was it something Jaina decided to do unilaterally just because she's like oh we need sacrificial pawns to give us some information about what's going on in the Empire I don't know we kind of dive a little bit too into some of Lavi's motivation we see a little bit of a flashback where she's mad at her mom being like right I'm going to sign up from the Northern Yeagers I'm going to save North Ambria unlike I'm not going to do like grandpa it seems like once again he was one of the heroes and I guess when things started getting bad instead of being there toughing it out and being there for the empire uh, being there for um North Ambria he left it. he abandoned it which is I think that's why I was also like oh that's the interesting thing considering well, that's why people turned against the prince. That's why there was a revolution in the first place, because the royal family abandoned North Ambria during the Salt Pill incident. So, But Lobby feels like she has so much to prove just because I think it's almost like a parallel you can make to Valerie. And also, I think I brought it up before, like the parallel the rain. Both of them have this. Once again, the title of hero is a noose around everyone in their necks. Lavi feels like she has to live up and make up for the mistakes of her father. Rain, kind of in the same regard to some extent. Uh, well, grandfather in her case. But that might have been the main reason why he took a step back. Because he wanted to focus on his family and be there for them. Instead of just putting North Ambria first. He wanted to put his family first. But Lavi's like, no, I'm, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put North Ambria first. I'm going to be a hero. Where my grandfather failed North Ambria, I will succeed. So she's got this hero complex. Like She feels the need that she has to succeed. And that in itself is another angle to that parallel. She wants to be a hero so badly. And I said last episode, and I just said now... Being a hero for Reed is a, a noose around his neck, you know? So it's just, it, that contrast is so fascinating. Um, I can, I could definitely see their encounter being very similar to like when Lloyd and Risha, specifically Lloyd, and because he, he sent something about Reen, and even in retrospectively, he talks about like that encounter and what it meant, you know? And even Reen is in, in the same regard, but... Lavi has this, like I said, this need to prove herself, and obviously hearing Rogan bring up her grandfather, most people don't know that. Also, another parallel, she's an instructor, she became an instructor before Ring did, uh, at an even younger age, too. Uh, it was also interesting, too, to think about, like, right, she's, uh, well, I mean, who knows, well, she's 15 when she got promoted, so we don't know how old she was when she, because she could have been, like, 14 when she joined, so... I mean, it's still, like, Fee was still a, a Jaeger at a much younger age. I'm sure Shirley was in the same regard. Like, I don't know if they ever, sp I mean, you probably, she grew up in that. Like, that's part of her family. So her circumstances are different from Fee, who was just found on a battlefield. Shirley grew up in it. So Shirley's been surrounded by, like, Jaegers her entire life. S same thing to Fee, but not nearly as long as Shirley. So, and it probably, and it still took a while before Fee got put on the battlefield, much to, like, Rudiger's, like, reservations. But still, so it's just interesting for her to kind of end up being an instructor and stuff like that. Which she has no, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm shooting here and there. I missed one of the targets. And it was it, Zaria was kind of like, oh, like she's the one kind of be like, oh, look at you. She's, her and Marty definitely seem like the whole like, oh, we're going to, like, replay the full type of characters. Like, oh, well, it seems like they can, well, like, Marty seems like just kind of like your very lax character. He definitely, oh, super gives off Lecter vibes. Like, yeah, I'm, I catch on to stuff pretty quickly, but I'm super lazy and lazy affair. I, I, I always like that archetype. Um, 
And Isaria, Isaria, she kind of has, like, Shirley energy and kind of, and Sarah energy to some extent. I should also bring that up, too. Glask is called, what was he like, the Lightning Lord of, it was something like that, Lightning Lord of uh, North Ambria. I was like, now that's interesting. Um, makes you wonder what Lavi's grandfather's nickname was, what his, his pseudonym was. Um, either way. I thought Marty and was it Italian were the same dude, but it's like no, it's like it's something, it's something with an eye and talk. Those two, they're helping repair the village because I thought that was, I thought that's who Italian and Marty were. They're not. So we get introduced in this day today. They're the squad that's going to be infiltrating the empire. But um, what's also interesting was that like Italian, he has like this interesting situation with when he was fighting. Lobby and she's like, I'm never gonna lose it to ever anyone again. It's like she's her issue. You could definitely tell is gonna be like her impatience. She just wants to go, go, go to prove herself so much that it, she's, she's kind of very short sighted in that regard, and she's kind of letting that blind her. Talion, for whatever re reason, and even um, Isria, uh, I keep, I, I keep, I've heard the name a couple times. It's gonna take me a while to properly pronounce it, but it's like Isaria. It's like. Oh, still the softy because he got distracted during the fight thinking about her. I don't know whether it's a thing of like, oh, he likes her or something, but he got distracted during the fight and he ended up losing. So, also, I got an answer to a question I had before, but I did. I don't remember if I included this in my trailer discussion or not for this, or just my discussion in general about when I brought this up twice uh, about this, this series. I was curious about what the battle ornament situation was going to be because I brought it up like I could easily. See, I was like, "Are it going to be something else? Is it going to be an enigma?" Turns out they're using enigmas. But the reason why I was like, "It could be something else," because I was curious whether they were going to use Arcus units because, well, we know that I mean Lloyd and Risha ended up getting their hands on Arcus units later on. And so does eventually like like Liberal and because um, at the time those were the more advanced ones and also i'm sure video game wise it makes it easier where the characters aren't all using different ornaments so it makes sense but i'm sure like those are the most advanced ornaments at the time but i know like uh, i forgot what they're called there's something with an x but even the ones in calvert aren't arcus units those are new battle ornaments but it makes sense why north ambria would be using the enigmas because arcus are, are an empire specific thing that's the, the the practice ground that's the uh where they're getting tested out and stuff but uh liberal and crossbow both use the enigmas so it's interesting to see that showcase and it being used used in that way, way too where it's not they don't keep the units on them like marty activated it and it gave like italian like strength because not only does it allow you to use arts, it does increase your natural ability so he was able to get super strong or could it be like oh it it did that, plus maybe an art to increase his strength was uh, cast as well. But it's interesting to see that Marty, I guess as a commanding officer, he, like, it's probably one Arcus unit, and they activate it to around everyone rather than each individual keeping one on hand. Or maybe it's just because they're not out in the field, they don't get to keep one on hand. That was just so fascinating how that was depicted, though. But uh, all four of them kind of working together as a squad. Once again, Marty being the one that's like, right, Talion, get out there, grab the driver. Um, Isaria ended up shooting the wheels. Um, Lavi ended up shooting out of the tower to stop the vehicle. But another part of the tower fell and the vehicle blew up. So it's like, cool, cool, cool. We're in super trouble and no one, like Talion and Isaria kind of are kind of worried. That's why I think it's so interesting. She's kind of got this like playful nature. But then like when stuff kind of happens, she's even she's kind of like, uh, uh, Marty, shut your mouth, you know? Uh, when it, when he's kind of talking to Jaina, he knows her enough to be like, you wouldn't call us here just to dismiss us. Like, so what do you want? It's like, yeah, you got a new job. You're going to sneak into the empire. Also, uh, Lavi, this is kind of your one and only opportunity. You're already kind of in trouble. This is extra trouble. Once again, using this as an excuse to put them in a situation because there's no way Lavi's going to back down. It's like, yeah, you have no choice. Go to the Empire, gather some intel about the hero. The, once again, something even Rogan's squad couldn't even do. Find some info about them, and then you don't come back to North Ambria until you do. And if you don't, you can't come back. It's kind of the whole point. So, but Lobby's like ready, once again, to prove herself. 
I didn't talk about it last episode. I forgot to, but we do see in the outro, like, all the different places they go in the Empire. There was, like, one point there was a training dummy. I'm immediately like, that could be LeGrom, could it? There was another place where they were, there was Mishy and Machete. I'd assume it has to be Crossbow because that hasn't crossed over into the Empire yet. Um, God, there was, oh, there was another, there was a casino. And I was thinking, like, that's either a, it has to be, I would assume Crossbow because it seems like Crossbow is probably going to be like the big neutral point for them, maybe infiltrating the Empire, maybe. I don't know. But the only other place I could think of is like Raquel, where a casino would be. So. We also see them in uh, Roar because they also have uh, the little remote control that the Roar uh, Institute was working on. Two, those two guys in particular uh, were working on uh, when you first go to Roar in uh, the first Code Seal game. So a lot of familiar environments and stuff like that. So a lot of uh, continued setup, uh, world building when it comes to North Ambria. Once again, getting their perspective on certain things. So... It's definitely going to be really, really interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.